Sixth point, the, the no property issue. Why do we advocate no property? Because it's an absolute waste to have the materialistic, materialistic basis of property identification, which has been created entirely by advertising agencies. Property has been confused with identity. People think they are what they own. I think, uh, what was that quote from Fight Club I thought was pretty good, that the uh, things you own don't, you don't own them, they own you, I believe was the quote by the uh, Dylan character, which is actually a pretty fair assessment. Basically, property as we know it today is the capitalist byproduct that has, that is continuing to exploit and destroy and waste our natural resources. It is in asinine for each person to own an automobile. It, the sad thing is it's become so ingrained into the idea of identity and the idea of freedom that everyone should have a duplicate of everything else and hence less social capital, hence more stratification. Uh, there's many different angles I can take, which I'm not going to go into a tangent on at this point in time because I want to keep this fast and quick, at least I'm trying to. The issue of property and why we don't advocate it is because it is too wasteful. It is not sustainable for every single person on the planet to have everything everybody else has in a, in a singular way. We don't want to keep duplicating everything. We want to make things accessible to everyone. Everyone has access. And when that's established, you're going to see a completely different cultural shift in the way people view each other because stratification will evaporate uh, because, well, I'm just going to stop there. It's wasteful and the culture is heavily polluted by it. And the final point, which I already touched upon, uh, was the city system. The city systems serve as metaphoric representations of what the global system will consist of, which is a unified systems approach using systems theory, which has been around for a long time. This is nothing new to show how everything can be self-sustaining in a city system, hence everything can be self-sustaining on the globe. So when we want to build a test city, it's to show that this is the way the global application should work with all of these individual cities locked together into a larger infrastructure where resources that are resources which are required to go to everyone on the planet will have a mode of distribution to do so in a system of preservation harnessing that is also the highest, most efficient system you can have. Uh, it's a little bit of an abstraction, but the point is the city system is very critical because they serve as the metaphor of the larger global system of uh, basically technological unification through a systems approach. Systems theory is the key word there. So I hope I clarified a few things for anyone out there that's been having some difficulties with some of these simple points. While people will give you all sorts of complex and clever arguments against these issues, which, you know, I'm not even going to go into, which they think they might back you into a corner with. Remember how specific those arguments are, and then remember the larger order issue. Will all things be resolved? No, they won't. There will always be issues. There will always be things, always be things to smooth out. But nevertheless, uh, you can't deny what I've just stated because the logic is sound and has been proven by, proven by experience. These are what needs to happen. This is what needs to happen for sustainability. We're faced with three massive crises right now. This is something else that you can relate to people. We're faced with an economic collapse of a massive pyramid scheme that's global with many different layers, and blowing up at different points in time across the globe. Um, this has been capitulated by various stock market shenanigans, and uh, it is, even if that didn't happen, it wouldn't change anything. It would have been something else. Uh, it's a pyramid scheme, and eventually you're just going to, quote, run out of money. Uh, that's the only thing that can happen mathematically. You could put a stop to it. You could just put your hand down and say, no, we're going to stop it right now. The debt isn't real. The interest isn't real. The paper money isn't real. It doesn't represent anything. But that is still the paradigm we live in, and the chain reaction is going to continue. The second issue is the ecological collapse. We all know we built an infrastructure on fossil fuels, but which whether they go away in 10 years or 200 years, it doesn't matter. It's still unsustainable, and there has to be a move to get, to get out of it. I'm not even going to talk about the waste, uh, just the peak everything in the sense that the market system is further compounding duplication, materialism, distorted values in order to continue to sell things. And all that does is waste our resources in one direction. There's no schemes of recycling being put forward. In fact, I recently read how most recycling schemes as far as glass and, and uh, paper and stuff have such a minimal effect because of the inefficiency of the processes that are used. And the other issue of reasoning has to do with labor displacement, and that's, uh, that's going to be a growing reality. I, I've talked about this before. I did at the end of the Iowa lecture. Um, I cannot 
and again, people will deny this and give you other angles, but for me, I really can't see how the jobs are coming back. I can't see how the motivation to the motivation to stop automation, excuse me, I can't see how automation, even in an economic collapse, is not going to be used to pull out companies that are suffering because automation will eventually become cheaper due to Moore's Law and other things that have, that have been talked about in the past. Um, so labor displacement is a big issue, controversial one, and I give it that. There are variables I might be missing, but I think uh, I really don't see how it's possible for, um, for society to continue the way it has unless we move into such an artificial basis of monetary exchange, uh, like an information age, where it becomes so arbitrary and so detached from reality that uh, it would just be pointless in and of itself. Um, there's a book by Jeremy Rifkin that goes in that direction called, um, actually I don't have it in front of me right now, but uh, there's a, he wrote a book about this possible new sector emerging, which I found to be very, very dangerous. I, I was uh, disturbed when I was reading it. Uh, that's, no, that's no comment on Rifkin, by the way. I like Rifkin a lot. He has a very exploratory mind, and while I might not agree with some of his conclusions, I think uh, the angles he, he uses are actually very important. 